Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, we are getting back underneath the Al Ferrari and building some bash guards. All right, guys, welcome back to the Al Ferrari. Those of you who were watching recently will see will have seen that I put uh, brake lines, fuel lines. Um, clutch lines all underneath the car and I've got the uh, the mast cylinders and a lot of bits and pieces that I've put underneath the car that are vulnerable in uh, some of them are vulnerable so I'm going to have to get under there and put some protection there um, if you've missed it I'll put a link up above uh, so you can catch up and if you're enjoying this build um, please think about subscribing it does help us out uh, and uh, click the bell and all that sort of good stuff all right, getting back into it, um, a couple of points from last week, I did put in the drive shaft, the tail shaft into this car, and there were some questions on uh, why I didn't go a one-piece tail shaft. Um, it doesn't have the articulation, so it would hit the, uh, the body. I'd have to remake even more of the tunnel than I did uh, back in the reinforced section. The bit I changed was just sort of just a, a simple part in the middle. Um, I would have had to cut out a lot more. It would have been a lot more work, and also... The benefit of having that CV joint in there in the middle of the tail shaft instead of having a one piece, um, that can take out some of uh, extra uh, drive shaft vibration. And because, um, like I've mentioned in the past when I first put the engine in, the engine and the angle of the diff are not necessarily, they're, they're not perfectly true because the diff in the alpha is offset and the engine is uh, slightly, slightly sort of twisted. So it's not the perfect drive line and that CV um, along with uh, everything else can help take out some of that drive line vibration if there is any there should be very little as I said my angles are I think about 1.2 degrees anything over three degrees can be you know, astronomically bad and undrivable oh, I think this should be okay anyway let's uh, get this car up in the air and uh, show you what I'm going to tackle today All right, so uh, those of you who uh, have been following along with this build would have seen that I actually put in my alternator down here. It's really low in the car at the front. And, uh, and also I converted this car to a steering rack, uh, which is further back here. These are both sitting reasonably low. I mean, the alternator is not the lowest part of the car, but it is um, lower than the sort of a straight line between this uh, bottom of the front lip through to the subframe. So it's just a, a lower point so if I do go over something that is going to hit first I don't want to hit that and damage things and uh, and also with the uh, steering rack the steering rack is sitting lower than this uh, front cross member it's just the way I had to mount it in this car and uh, uh, I want to protect that slightly now the exhaust does sit a little bit lower uh, again than, than that further on so uh, I'm less concerned about that, but we do need to build some sort of a bash plate here. And um, that also said, this car originally has a bit of a, uh, a dodgy design in the fact that uh, the sump of the original engine, it's a car sump, so it's not a sheet metal sump like a lot of modern engines, that sits low right down the front here. So uh, it already has quite a vulnerable area that uh, it's, there's... Uh, Quite a few people have cracked the sump in the uh, original cars because it is on full display right here in the front. So where, what I need to do now is start designing up a, uh, a bit of a bash plate to, uh, to go on the front here. I think I'll probably do two of them. One on the front and then another one just under here, just, uh, just protecting uh, the vital bits underneath the car. Let's get into it. All right, a bit of CAD, cardboard added design later, and uh, we have uh, my front bash tray ready to go. You can see I've got uh, a little bit of shape to it. These, uh, these sides here will give it some strength, and uh, 
this fits up perfectly. It's exactly the uh, the correct width for the front of this section here. And uh, going back to the, uh, the the cross member of the car. So now we need to make it out of steel. Alright, well the uh, the guillotine didn't like the, the big sheet of 1.6mm plate. Um, there is a bigger crack all the way through now, but the the, uh, the the bed hasn't dropped. My reinforcing is still holding quite well, so uh, I'm going to cut through this by hand um, on the big cuts, but the uh, small cuts, I'm still going to give it a go and see if I can uh, complete them using the guillotine. Well, that is a very, very nice bash plate. This thing is rock solid as it's 1.6 mil steel, uh, and that is going to do the job nicely, and it sort of tidies up the uh, that sort of front bit of the car, sits in there just nice. So now I have to do something about mounting it there permanently. All right, well, um, that was a lot of work. I'm realizing I'm getting really carried away on something that is just a sacrificial bash plate for the bottom of the car. But uh, basically what I've done is I've gone through and cut a bunch of these little rings of uh, tube. And then I cut, made, basically made a bunch of these little washers, which the idea of that is that these are going to be so that I can have my bash plate and have a recessed bolt from underneath so that uh, I obviously don't want the bolts hanging down any lower than the bash plate. I didn't want to just bolt through this bash plate because then you're creating a, a lower point. So I wanted them recessed. I could have done it lots of simpler ways. Um, I, I wanted to keep it a reasonally large size because it can be under the car uh, the potential for corrosion is higher, so uh, I'm going for M8 bolts, um, and uh, and I wanted the head of it recessed in up underneath, so that's why I've sort of got this stack, and uh, I cut all of these out. Thank you very much again to the patrons who uh, who got me that um, drop saw, and also uh, also the patrons for the lathe, which I managed to turn these up on, as you saw. And I'm realizing now that I miscalculated because I measured the depth of these holes going, okay, well, I'm going to put a plate on the top and the, uh, I want the bolt head to be sitting, you know, just shy with a, with a washer on. It's just shy from underneath. 
What I forgot about is the fact that it's also going to be sitting on top of the uh, the bash plate, so it's adding an e the extra thickness, you know, extra 1.6 millis bash plate, making them quite a deep hole. So uh, what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck these back on the lathe again, turn them down so instead of sitting on top of the, uh, the li these little cups, they'll sit inside the cups, take the, the height down a little bit, so it's just not such a deep recess. And uh, then I need to probably uh, weld them all together. So you can see here what I made is a welding boss designed for this job. So I can stick it through my bash plate, put my ring over the top and then the little disc in top of that with a bolt through the center. I can keep it all centered and then weld it all up and have them all exactly the same. All right, I am very happy with that. That looks great. So I've got all of my recessed mount holes. Um, they're all TIG welded up all the way around. So uh, they're looking really good. I have spent far too much time on this. It's such overkill for a bash plate. I have currently spent a day and a bit just to get to here. And I still haven't even got mounts on the car yet to actually bolt it to. So um, yeah. Not the smartest use of time, but, uh, but I'm very happy with the result as it, anyway. Uh, let's see if we can actually fit it to the car now. All right, so I just went through and got these front mounting tabs in. Um, I've got the nuts welded into the, uh, the rear subframe. I've still got more patching and stuff to do on this later, but uh, I've just got to do the last one in the center and then we actually have all the mounting tabs fitted. And there we have it. We have the bash plate completely in mounted. Um, I am I am very very happy with that. It is complete overkill, but it's in. It fits. It's uh, it's looking good. All right. Well, I can't believe I spent two whole days of work building just building a bash plate for <laughs> the Alfa Ferrari. Uh, it's massively over-engineered. There's, uh, yeah, I just spent way, way too long on the details and, you know, but, uh, but it's neat and tidy and uh, I'm very happy with the finish. 
But we're out of time, so I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, in 1950, the top end of Ferrari's lineup was the 340 America. The America cars were Grand Tourers with the largest V12 engine they produced, which in the 340's case was a 4.1 litre Lampredi V12, making 220 horsepower. Only 23 coupes were built with varying bodywork, with 11 by Vignali, 8 by Touring, and 4 by Ghia. In 1952, Ferrari built six. 342 Americas, which were detuned to 200 horsepower, and they were bodied by Pen and Farina. By 1953, Ferrari upped its game again to the 375 America, now with the new 4.5 litre long block Lampredi V12, making 300 horsepower. This is a very exclusive and expensive car, of which only 12 were ever made. Most were bodied by Pen and Farina, although Vinali did body four, a convertible and three coupes including this impressive example. Yep. All right, well, that was a whole bunch of time spent on something that really doesn't matter a whole great deal, but I'm very happy with the result. I, it really looks nice. I was planning on doing more uh, covers in this episode. There's, there's a couple more I need to do um, to cover up underneath the, the mass cylinders and there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of little bits and pieces, but uh, that was all the time I had. So, um, Hopefully you enjoyed it. It's a bit of uh, fabrication. I really like that sort of nitty gritty fabrication, but yeah, I did get a bit carried away. But you know it's there. I do know it's there, and, and I'm ha and I am happy with the results. So, and it would have uh, niggled away at you if you didn't do yeah, it. Yeah, right. look, look, I'm, I'm just I'm glad it, it, it it's there and it looks really neat and it's uh, yeah it's it's what it, what what it should be. That's so, right. Like you've done it properly. It's good. Yeah. You know you feel. Better if you're that type of personality yeah. that needs to have it done properly, yeah. even if you can't see it, then yeah. otherwise it would always bother you. Like a stone in your shoe. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly. annoying. Yeah. So uh yeah, that's it for this week. Please like, subscribe if you want to keep um Jeff and the uh there's like we said the glamorous lifestyle to which he's accustomed to. <laughs> <laughs> Very glamorous. You can follow him on Patreon and see the videos of that ads a day earlier. Um yeah. And uh, yeah, and uh, Instagram and Facebook, home built by Jeff as well. All right, guys. See, <laughs> See you guys. Speed twelve engine they produced. Um, again to the three seven five, three seven five America. Now with the new four point five liter. Vignali. Mm hmm. Long block Lampredi V twelve making three hundred horsepower. Yes. Long block.